Chuck here. I'm uh, more update on um, messing around with Hendershot's coil. Um, I've been trying to uh, replicate uh, his coil, but um, I reason that I don't have to be exact. I don't have to have his exact same dimensions. I don't have to have the exact same wire type. Don't have to build it exactly the same way. What I'm looking for is an effect uh, which sort of shows that Hendershot may have been onto something. And um, uh, w one thing that uh, that's interesting here is the notion of a coil capacitor, where you have a coil wrapped around a capacitor, and um, the question is, is there so some sort of uh, transfer of energy between the coil and the capacitor, and what actually happens to the cap capacitor? That's the question. So by building sort of a model of this thing, we can sort of observe what's happening on the capacitor and see if there's anything interesting there. Um, the uh, one thing that in reading about Hendershot he did was use uh, paraffin, which is a wax, to uh, he, that would be the last step. He would pour that all over his, his wires and uh, in the coil between the coil and the capacitor. Um, and I got excited about that because that is a uh, that wax is a, is a well known electret and wanted to shout out to Bodkins who's playing around with electret. He's sort of the only one on YouTube who's clued into the fact that electrets might be very interesting here in terms of this whole capturing energy, making these nonlinear weird systems that do that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I haven't done anything with wax yet, but um, I'm, I am observing some kind of wacky stuff here. Don't know how to explain it. Uh, so here is what I built. Yeah. Zoom back a little bit. So this is a uh, just the co just one coil. Uh, Hendershot actually had two, um, but I'm just building one instance of it to play around. Um, this is a salsa jar, and it is about three and a quarter inches in diameter. Um, so I'm smaller than uh, Hendershot. He was. Five and five six, five and fifteen sixteenths of an inch in diameter, um, and inside there's uh, two and three quarters inches of um, tin foil, and the same on the outside, and then it's wrapped in electrical tape just to sort of protect it. So this capacitor is a standalone thing; it can be pulled out of here. Um, then there's the coil wrapped uh, basket weave style. Uh, there's actually, um, and these are toothpicks, they're only two inches tall, so I'm smaller. Hendershot used pegs that were like three inches, and he used much thicker wire. I'm using magnetic wire, but I, but I respected the same number of turns he had. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to stimulate this coil. There's uh, four different coils here. There's L. 1, L2, L3, and L4. L1 is 10, 10 turns around L2. L2 is underneath, which and it's 64 turns of magnetic wire. And then L3 and L4 are both 24 turns of magnetic wire uh, above L2. So we have four different coils here. And I, and I, and I was sort of thinking that the inductance isn't really important. What Hendershot may have been doing is more, a more trivial thing of creating a transformer. Um, so if, if the turn ratios are correct, then you get the transformer effect. And I don't need to use uh, thick wiring if I'm going to be playing with smaller voltages and currents. Um, the capacitor, uh, this, this one, measures at uh, 240 picofarads. And I don't think the capacitance matters. What we what we really care about is whether or not charges build up in it and you know whether it sort of behaves or operates like a capacitor. Um, now paraffin would be poured all around this thing which would create an electret effect possibly especially if you made the electret in, in a high electric field uh, while you're pouring it. So you basically 
possibly turn this thing on or turn something up on outside it that kept that field there while it, while it was drying. I don't think Hendershot did that, so I, you know maybe just the paraffin there is, is enough. So um, here's what I'm going to do. So on L2, which is the, the coil behind L1, and it's the one with 64 turns, I'm going to have that connected to the ignition coil here and um, then onto the CFLs and ground. So um, basically I'm just running a high voltage AC through this. On the capacitor, I have hooked it up to my meter here. Only one lead. The other lead is the inner cylinder is left floating. The outer cylinder is connected up to the meter and the other end of the meter is connected to ground. So we're measuring, a, we're, me, we're going to measure the AC voltage that travels from the outside of the capacitor to ground. And as if you turn this thing on, um, so now it's on, uh, there is a voltage here. And this is what I wanted you to see, which is weird. Um, I've played around with ver various frequencies and this this seems to be the one that gets me up the highest uh, in terms of the voltage between the capacitor or just the outside of the capacitor and ground and we have basically uh, an AC current in the realm of 73 volts but what's weird is every once in a while and it seems to be periodic there is a doubling of the voltage and the meter just uh, flashes to to 0 L or, or maybe to 120 volts or some number that's roughly double this voltage. Um, and all we have here is a coil with a capacitor inside it. So I'm scratching my head. Probably what I need to do is look at this on the oscilloscope. And I have a very crude oscilloscope, but I'll try.